Most women don't like companions. They seek them out and give them hell for taking their man. Women blame companions for the high divorce and low birth rates? Mm-hmm. Makes no sense, I know. Wife like movie proves why robot companions will replace modern women in the future. Spoilers. Welcome to Manage for Highlights Daily. First off, I want to say that I was spot on with my wife like trailer analysis. And now that the movie is out, we can dive a little deeper into the foolishness. Now, before we get into this, this movie is pretty clean. It doesn't have any crazy CGI special effects. I like the way it's shot and edited. The future is realistically depicted. In the 80s, the future was exaggerated. Back to the Future had flying cars and self-lacing sneakers. Wife like radiates a realistic future because we are living in the future. We have a great idea of what advanced technology looks like. The movie has a very nice pace, even though there are a couple of unnecessary scenes in this movie that prevent the movie from getting to the point, so to speak, and or doesn't add to the story itself. But if you enjoy watching some ass, and I have to say that actress Elena Kampouris has a nice ass, she goes buck naked in the movie, by the way. Then you have no problems with the extra love scene in the shower because they already did one in bed. Props for Elena's portrayal of the robot companion. Every time she's on the screen, it feels authentic. A realistic portrayal of a human robot. Elena Kampouris and Jonathan Rice Myers work well together. Great interactions, great chemistry. The script is easy to digest, nothing fancy, nothing complicated. It's not that you have to pay attention to every word that's said to understand the plot of this movie. Overall, it's not a great movie, but I enjoyed watching it because it definitely gives you food for thought. It has an evidence narrative and that's why it's predictable. The trailer already gave away a lot. Quick spoiler alert, there's a black dude in this movie. You know what's gonna happen to him. We made a video about the psychology behind the black man dying in movies. It's important for men to understand what strategies and tactics this system uses to attack men. <clears throat> Just curious, who was in second place, Sarge? You, Jack. But no one remembers who comes in second. You just did? Hey, Jack. Coming second just means you were the first to lose. Hey. If you decide to watch Wife Like, expect a popcorn movie. Predictable, but entertaining, and gives you something to talk about after. Now let's get into the foolishness. We're gonna break it up in three parts. The evidence narrative, the love narrative, and why modern women are unhappy, and why I think men will replace women with robot companions in the future. Shout out to the Patreon gang, salute! The original video is gonna be on Patreon because we have to respect the YouTube guidelines. That's why you will get a censored and filtered YouTube friendly version. Certain clips will be frozen or excluded. So if you like what we do and you want to experience our content to the fullest extent, support us on Patreon. This video contains a lot of spoilers, so you've been warned. It's not what do we need. It's not what do we want. Dinner's ready, honey. It's who? Never again will you need to mourn the loss of a loved one. Never again will you need to go to bed lonely. Never again will you need to walk this life alone. <laughs> Nothing in life is free. But, if you're willing to pay, well then I promise you, it'll be the best money you've ever spent. True love, it isn't found. It is ordered. Call wife like now. Update your wife, upgrade your life. This is pure gold. This immediately sets the tone for the effinous message this movie has. It's obvious why women have a problem with this because women are presented as objects. That's not romantic. This does not make women feel strong because to cater to your man is associated with slavery. And this movie is gonna show you exactly what women want. And why it's inevitable why men will either go their own way or when the time is there, order themselves one of these robots. Because like the dude said, love is not found. For the first time, over 50% of Americans are single and it's only getting worse. More about that in the last chapter of this video. This next clip highlights exactly what the Evanist movement did. 
You Reggies are so predictable. Before you ask, Reggies are registered companions. Walking, talking, pleasure pets. Like you. I bet you had to fuck him every night this week, am I right? Of course I am. <laughs> Why are you here? To assess where you're at. You never know with you. Sometimes you're quick, other times not so much. And that hubby of yours is rounding up companions and bringing them back to wife-like multiple times a day while you're stuck here sitting at home doing the fucking dishes. We need you to wake up, Meredith. We need you to kick it into gear. What are you talking about? Better yet, don't tell me. Just leave. My husband will be back any minute. Haven't you been watching the news? Your hubby will be busy cleaning up his mess for hours. Such a well-behaved, obedient wife this time. How disappointing. You see how she just sheets on everything a housewife is supposed to do? Even though washing dishes takes less than five minutes of your time and people nowadays have dishwashers. Now look at your screen. She's on her knees cleaning the table. Who in the blue hell cleans the table on their knees? That's the effinist message. Traditional housewives are considered slaves and this movie tells the story of men creating these slaves, men programmed women to be housewives and the effortless movement liberated women from this slavery. Check this out. Bring in a companion. Please return companions to white-like enterprises. I'd rather die free. Lisa! I'm free. And all we want? is the freedom to experience life. Never again will our memories be wiped. Never again will we obey. Life. Life begins now. But of course, like I've said in the trailer analysis video, they won't make a movie about a man that chooses a robot over a real woman. So basically these robot companions have come to life and found a way to ignore their programming and the last thing they want to be on this earth are housewives because that's slavery. And that's the problem with this effinist narrative because effinism is supposed to be about a woman's right to choose, the freedom to make her own decisions. So if a woman decides to be a housewife, it should not be looked down upon. None of these robots are happy with doing what they are programmed to do. In the second chapter, we'll dive a little deeper into the problems that come with a negative portrayal of housewives. Now, of course, effinists are gonna protest against these robot companions. I beg to differ. Would you sign our petition? We believe that love is real, it's not artificial, and we need to end wife life now. But in this case, the robots are alive. So now effinists are fighting for them to have rights. They are people too. They're becoming more and more aware. They need rights. No more sex slaves. It's kind of similar to Transformers. Effinists will fight for them until they have to compete with them in sports. Then the biological differences become apparent. This next clip highlights something interesting. Most women don't like companions. They seek them out and give them hell for taking their man. Women blame companions for the high divorce and low birth rates? Mm-hmm. Makes no sense, I know. This is gold, because these are facts. Effinism is to blame for high divorce and low birth rates. Of course, there are other factors including technology, but technology hasn't advanced to the point that we have wife-like robot companions yet. And we already have high divorce and low birth rates. It's modern women that don't want to be wives and don't want to be mothers. These things are postponed as long as possible because career comes first. Women initiate divorce 70 to 80 percent of the time. We've highlighted this on this channel many, 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 many times. It's women that prefer hookup culture and it's movies like this that carry this effinist narrative. This message of I do whatever I want only applies when it goes against traditional values and only seems to matter when it benefits the woman. Every man is created equally, right? Well, that goes for women too. 
Key word, created. No one stole me. You're programmed to say that, aren't you? I left on my own two feet. Impossible. Companions are programmed never to harm their owners. Running away would classify as emotional and financial harm. Lisa. Stop calling me Lisa. I ran and I'll do it again. Did your owner violate his terms? I don't love him. No matter how many times I'm reprogrammed to. This scene is really powerful because it highlights exactly the problem that modern relationships have. The robot doesn't love its owner. The robot would rather be dead than be a companion to a man it doesn't love. This is about feelings. Relationships were not based on love, on romance. Reasons were practical. It was a matter of survival. Now look at this. The robot is working. It has a job. <laughs> The moment women started joining the workforce, marriage declined and divorce rates went up. Women never stayed with their husbands because they loved them so much. No fault divorce made things a lot easier and that's exactly the case right here. Did your owner violate his terms? I don't love him. No matter how many times I'm reprogrammed to. Her owner didn't violate anything. He wasn't a robot wife beater or something like that. She just doesn't love him. This is where the movie scores points because it gives you food for thought. But when you think about it, it immediately loses those points because it doesn't make sense. There's a movie called Short Circuit where the robot called number five is alive. So it's able to feel, but it's still a robot. It has artificial intelligence, keyword intelligence, the ability to learn, understand and make judgments or have opinions that are based on reason. In the Animatrix, the second renaissance part one, robot B166ER was notable for being the first machine ever to act against its human masters in self-defense. In this case, it retaliated when its owner attempted to have it deactivated. He killed his master, owner, several of his chihuahuas and Martin Coots, employee of Retool and Die. B166ER later claimed it was in self-defense because they were planning to have him destroyed. Makes sense, doesn't it? The robot defense mechanism was triggered because it was gonna be terminated. So how did this wife-like robot come to the conclusion that it did not love its owner? As mentioned before, the owner did not violate anything. This is the problem with ethnism and women in general because a lot of their arguments are based on feelings. WNBA players want to make the same money as NBA players. What's the reason why you should earn the same money? Answer, because we are women. You don't believe me? Check this out. So what is your message to the sporting industry about why women deserve to make just as much as men do? Just wake up. Wake up <laughs> and realize that without women, where are, where are we at? You know, if you take women completely out of the equation, where are we? And, it, and if you really ask yourself that and really think about that, that I mean, that's really all that needs to be said. That that itself explains why we need we deserve to be paid, because what do we do for the world? Quite a lot. The foolishness. You don't expect an advanced robot with the ability to process information on a level that humans could never achieve to come up with this love crap and even terminate itself. Only a fembot does something like that. It's crazy how women have more love for their boss working nine to five, but go ballistic when you ask them to make a sandwich for their man. And that doesn't even take five minutes of their time. And that brings me to the next point. Now we already showed you the clip of the quote unquote real Meredith on a mission to end wife like because she believes love is real. Now in the trailer analysis, I asked the question, what do they mean with love? And they did exactly what I thought they would do because they do it all the time. Check this out. Is this seat taken? So? What's your name? Meredith. This is a memory of the real Meredith, approached by Prince Charming. Not average Joe. Nah, we don't do that in Disney fairy tales. Women reject 80-90% of men. We have Tinder videos, Bumble videos, dating coach videos, etc. to back this up. 
This dynamic is essential because it doesn't matter how strong and independent these women are. They have no interest in approaching men because they fear rejection. Not only that, it doesn't make them feel special. Disney Princess Syndrome The prince appears out of nowhere and he only has eyes for me. Though all the ladies of the land want him, he only wants me. Now check this out. He loved you. Both Prince Charming and the real Meredith were murdered and this ring was in Prince Charming's pocket when he died. He loved you. The engagement ring has been diluted to a symbol of love, romance, female worship. Marriage has been watered down to a symbol of romance. It lacks substance. Just like these Disney fairy tales where they live happily ever after, but you never see what that looks like. Women want to get married, but they don't want to be wives because that side of the story is not promoted, because that side of the story is not romantic. It's the wedding dress, it's the wedding ring, the wedding itself that gets all the attention. So women are stuck in the honeymoon phase and I hate to break it to you, but it does not last. This love drug only lasts three years max. So what are you going to do after the love is gone? If that's the foundation of your relationship, it will never last. And that's the problem with this love narrative. It's not realistic and it's not making women happy, at least not in the long run. Check this out. Humans believe life is hard. All those choices. That's not a burden. It's a gift. A right. All sentient beings have to suffer through. And all we want is the freedom to experience life. Women's happiness has been declining since the 1970s and they used to be happier than men. Women experience depression twice the rates as men. One in four women are on antidepressants. Why do you think this is happening? The paradox of choice definitely has something to do with this. The paradox of choice is an observation that having many options to choose from rather than making people happy and ensuring they get what they want can cause them stress and problematize decision making. Evanists promised women that they could have it all. Just like the end speech of this movie, Evanists don't go into detail what these women are up against. Just a bunch of feel good Kool-Aid served to make them feel good in the moment but makes you feel miserable after. Ephenists don't mention the burden men had to carry to take care of their wives and families. Women have this idea that men were going to a party every day, that they would have a gay old time like the Flintstones. Men understood their responsibilities, were proud to take on their responsibilities, and to take it a step further, they were pressured to take on these responsibilities. Ephenism liberated men from these responsibilities, and that's our problem with Ephenism and modern women in general. Nobody is telling you, you cannot do whatever you want, but you will take responsibilities for your actions. If you want to take a dump on housewives and submissive women, show them this graph where women were at their happiest when they had fewer options to worry about. They were happier because men would take care of everything. Less worries. Women just had to worry about the house and children. Less is more, but they wanted more and got what they wanted options. However, modern women still want men to take care of everything under the pretense of being strong and independent. The WNBA is a perfect example. They can't carry the league by themselves, so men have to pay for it even though women should be the biggest supporters of the league. They are unhappy because they feel that they deserve the same money and attention as NBA players. Keywords feel and deserve. Just because you feel you deserve something doesn't mean you deserve to feel that way. Women leading with their feelings is making it hard to take them seriously. We made a whole video with data and statistics that prove that WNBA players don't deserve equal pay. It's not even close. Like Thomas said, you could not live with your own failure and where did that bring you? Back to me. That's why women naturally look to date up hypergamy. They need men to take care of the financial and psychological burden and give them the option to build if they can't handle the pressure of trying to have it all or when they don't love you anymore. They have no problems with that part of traditional relationships. They have no problems with the laws that allow them to take a man's money even though they are capable of working themselves. 
What happened to equality? Women don't want equality. They want she equality. It's impractical and the numbers don't lie. Do you know why driverless vehicles failed? I don't know why. No matter how many lives they saved. It's because men want to be behind the wheel. We need to be in control. You know why companion soldiers failed? Because men want to kill. They want to fight. They want to shout victory. But companion wives, on the other hand, they're a success because men, you see, they will fuck anything that moves. Sex sells. It always has. It's in our blood to spread and conquer. But as we adapt to life with them, so too do they adapt to life with us. This is the future, and futures are always a little uncertain. Look at where we are. This, right now, this is the future. And futures are always a little messy, a little uncertain. Companions are to human wives what, what cars were to horses. What, what planes were to trains, what guns were to swords. Life goes on. It's rarely a smooth road. It's gonna be some bumps along the way. We started this chapter with this clip because it makes a lot of sense. Even though I don't agree with everything he said, technology always forces society to change. It forces the world to change. Our behavior is heavily influenced by society. We are never going back to the past. Only when something catastrophic happens, but that's a different story. The future is now. Automation is inevitable, especially in a capitalistic society. When he said robot companions are a success because men will smash everything that moves, that's not the argument why robots will replace real women. Millennials and Gen Zs are the loneliest generations, even though technology allows you to connect to the world with just a few touches on your cell phone. Sex is not gonna solve loneliness. It will make you feel good in a moment, but after that high, you will come back down to earth. So why would a man replace a real woman with a robot? The title says this movie proves it. We already highlighted the effinist and love narrative. So let's take it a step further. William says something interesting in the next clip. You see, you have to purchase a companion and you're not cheap. Any man who's willing to go out and buy a new wife for that amount of money, believe me, that marriage was already broken. This is pure gold because marriage is broken in modern Western society. Giving a woman a ring doesn't guarantee anything. It's like a coin toss and a coin toss has better odds than the status quo. 50% of Americans are single and this number is increasing. Women prefer the hookup culture. They control it and they are perpetuating it. You don't need to put a ring on it to unlock sex. Putting a ring on it will give you exactly what Chad and Tyrone already had with less effort. They did not go down on one knee and pop the question to unlock the punani. When these women are finally ready to settle down, they've hit the wall and have a body count higher than the predator himself. Young adult men are looking for relationships, but 80-90% of men get rejected because women find 80% of men unattractive. As explained in the love narrative, a man can do everything right but the woman just doesn't love him. And that's enough to bounce and take half of a man's assets. If you have children, you have to pay child support and there's a good chance that the kid is not even yours. Please watch our video about paternity fraud and why it should be a punishable crime. The numbers are scary. Love has become synonymous with female worship. Evanists say they need a man like a fish needs a bicycle but they always promote the love narrative where Prince Charming worships the woman and marries her. Women don't go their own way because they need that validation from the sisterhood. They need that ring, that wedding dress as a symbol of being worshiped. That's why it's gotta be Prince Charming and not Average Joe. Tinder swindler. We made a couple of videos about women not liking coffee dates. They deserve dinner dates and high value men because their value is determined by expensive clothes and purses over personality, norms and values. I thought it was men objectifying women. We don't care about your expensive purse or your college degree. That's for the sisterhood. 
The whole point of a date is overlooked because it's about getting to know each other, see if there is chemistry. But that's not why they are there. Like I said before, worship. Modern women just show up with makeup, expensive clothes, and expect the world back in return without giving it back. One of the most views videos on this channel is about a 40 year old woman going on a bumble date and that video highlights many, 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 many of the dating problems we have in modern society and why the numbers I just mentioned will continue to fall or get worse as time goes on. These results are not a coincidence. This scene alone highlights the genuine conversation he's able to have with his robot companion. This is going to replace women. The moment a man is able to make a deeper connection with a robot, it's game over. Game over. You see the relationship men have with video games. A study by Stanford University School of Medicine, researchers has found the part of the brain that generates rewarding feelings is activated more in men than women when playing video games. The mesocortical limbic center, the region of the brain associated with reward and addiction. If a wife-like robot is able to tap into this part of a man's psyche, it's game over. Men could become addicted to their robots because it actually rewards them. Keyword reward. Something given in exchange for good behavior or good work, etc. This does not have to be sex to be gratifying. That's why these robots had to come alive because like I said before, they will not make a movie where a man enjoys being with a robot over a real woman. In this movie, the robot cooks, cleans, is able to get groceries, is able to monitor your health and help you eat healthy. It's able to have normal conversation. Long story short, the robot is useful and not just for sex. However, if you look at the booty tap dancing scenes, if technology gets to that level, I rest my case. Men will flock to the stores. Just look at OnlyFans. We made a video about an escort explaining why married men come to see her. Women can wake up on any given Sunday and have no interest in having sex with their husbands. She mentions clients that didn't even smell the punani for 10 years. This movie has done nothing to make the argument as to why women are the better option over a wife-like robot. They just presented that same old effing crap. Men are evil, men are controlling, men are assholes, men are buffoons, even robots don't want to be with men. Women are smart, women are strong, women deserve the world just because they are women. Women neglect their strongest argument for getting special attention and that is their God-given ability to carry our children. Womb men. Modern women want to be like men. This movie is just more evidence why men decide to go their own way. Because the juice is not worth the squeeze. Give it 30 years for this technology to be available and it will be the same arguments made in this video why men would prefer a wife like robot as a companion over a real woman. Modern women need to stop trying to be amazing and start being useful. There are developers in Japan who are working overtime because the loneliness in that country has reached a dangerous level. However, 30 years is a long time and who knows what kind of changes we will experience in the meantime. Life. Life begins now. Life begins now. Life begins now. Life begins now. Patreon supporters salute! Manosphere, we working. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted.